So, hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. On a glorious Sunday morning. It is, um, what time is it? About 11 o'clock now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, not been a bad day already. Uh, got woke up at 6 o'clock by the sun. So, got out of bed at 7. Started working at half 7. I've done loads already. The front garden's been revamped. Amazing what you can do when, you know, when you put your mind to it. So I'm reviewing this fella today, Brooklyn, and it's their special effects alcohol free hoppy lager. And uh, they're, what they're saying is, in movies special effects make you think you're seeing the unbelievable. In Brooklyn special effects, we're making you taste something incredible. A delicious alcohol free beer lager. Brooklyn special effects is a hoppy lager with an unexpected piney aroma and a pleasantly bitter, pleasantly bitter finish. The beer gets its golden ready sweetness from dry hopping with citra and amarillo hops, a technique rarely used in alcohol-free brewing. We use a specially developed fermentation method that limits the amount of alcohol that is created while allowing more traditional beer flavours to develop. It tastes just like a regular beer, but therein lies the special effect. It's not quite a witty... Uh, um, at least it's not trying to be too... Thing. You know, it's a witty uh, way of um, introducing itself to to us. So I do apologise for the branded glass today. Can't win them all. Dishwasher's got them. I do have to wash my glasses every now and again. You know. 30 reviews in the same glass, you know. And I am joking. But I do do more than one review in the same glass. Sometimes I just can't be bothered. There we go. You can see it now. Just. So, uh, good lacing around the edge. Amber pour in this light at least, a white head on the nose. Ooh, pleasant, um, pleasant citrus aroma on the nose. Let's dive in. So, yeah, this is a bit of air dog for me because, to be honest, I uh, we had problems last night doing uh, my wife does cakes and uh, we've got what they call an edible printer. So you get paper, edible paper, and you use, use special edible ink, basically food colouring, I think, and you can print onto the paper. You can print anything, photos, do anything with it. It's, it is amazing. And trying to, uh, she's doing a Bible for somebody today. It takes forward, doesn't it? And on one side there's a, there's a verse, and on the other side it's like, happy birthday, and some strange name. And uh, he, we had a bit of a problem, got it work, got it done. In the end, it took me an hour, sat on a Saturday night doing that. So I came down the shed, got a couple of extra Swifters, and I fell asleep. As soon as I hit the pillow, I fell asleep. I mean, it's great, because at least I get in my sleep. And then you get woke up by the sun at six in the morning, jumping in the bed. He got autism and he has nightmares. So sometimes I think he just does it because he wants to be next to his mum and dad. Kids, eh? So let's dive in. Initial, initial first taste, nice citrus taste to it. I've got to say, some of the alcohol-free beers I've reviewed, and I, I'm, to be honest, I want that st struck on reviewing them. I only got them because I thought, well, it's a review, you know, it's a review thing. Let's let's uh, see how we go with them. If they're nasty and rancid, I will never do it again. But some of them, to be fair, there's been some belters out there. And so there should be. If these people can brew brilliant beer with alcohol in, then they should be able to brew brilliant beer without alcohol in. Or minute traces of alcohol, like 0.005 or something. Which is basically alcohol for it, I mean, God's sakes. You'd have to drink about a thousand to, to even get anywhere near getting drunk. And then it'd have, got, it'd have gone out of your system before that, anyway. Is it some of that, like one to two units an hour disappear out of your system? Although I wouldn't like to put it to the test and get, get caught by the police, you know. And obviously, as things return to normality, um, 
I would have thought the police would be clamping down massively on, on both drink drivers, speeding drivers. They certainly are in Nottingham anyway. There's people who have took the mick. But then again, Nottingham, uh, I don't know about other parts of this country, but we have got so many chuffing speed cameras. I live next to Nottingham's Ring Road. So we've got speed cameras all the way down the Ring Road, speed cameras all the way up one lane, speed cameras on Mansfield Road, the other side. So I'm surrounded by speed cameras, so it's absolutely pointless, even trying to speed. And then where there isn't speed cameras, they have them vans that get you. So it's all done for um, money, money purposes. It's not done, not well, most of it's not done for, for accidents. Because if it was an accident hotspot, they'd put speed cameras on there. They would in Nottingham anyway. I mean, the M1 in Nottingham is the third, it's the third highest making revenue for a speed camera. Now, I always thought on the M1, there were speed cameras all the way down. They've got these grey things. And it seems that there obviously wasn't speed cameras because I'd see people whizzing past me. I mean, my car's shit at fucking 70 anyway. I, I go about 65, 70. And you see these people whizzing by it and you think to yourself, if the speed cameras are there, then everyone knows something I don't. I'm probably one of the slowest at 70. Um, but then I noticed on one side, there's a, there's a new yellow speed camera, like the, the Gatso ones that measure the speed on the floor. And I reckon that's the one that's getting people. So I always remember to make sure that I'm doing 70 or slightly under when I go past that. But obviously you do forget sometimes as you're driving along, you do go a bit faster. And uh, yes, don't want speeding tickets. I mean, for the rich, speeding tickets aren't a problem. It's the points that's the killer. So yeah, sort the front garden out, looking great. I've got nearly a thousand plants in pots. It's been an absolute bastard to move them. And I've got a load of rhubarb as well, a load of rhubarb, enough to do multiple brews. So I don't know if to do a massive rhubarb wine, do two lots of rhubarb wine. You know, it's only going to cost me the under tenner to do it. For the sugar and the yeast, about six quid actually, because the sugar's only about, Five bags of sugar, 65 pence a bag these days. So uh, five sixties, three pound, three pound 25. Twice that, six pound 50, couple of quid, eight pound 50 for 80 pints or 60 bottles of rhubarb wine, eventually. So it might be the thing. Well, then again, I might just contact, uh, there's a shop near me in Shearwood called The Bakehouse, and I might contact them and see if they want a load of fresh rhubarb. Um, you know, just to help out. I don't know anybody who needs rhubarb, so otherwise I'd just give it away. But the plants are getting to the stage where, the thing is with plants, like, like rhubarb, when it gets too much, they start to snap off and break. So you're better off taking off the, the, the ones that are ready, so that the, the small ones, and, and it keeps it, you know, keeps it growing. And I've just moved them to a new sunny location directly in front of the neighbours across the road so they can't see through my fence because there aren't those he gets. You know, you do get some. Don't go to work. Think the world owes them everything. And, you know, that don't bother me in a lot of ways. But it's the fact that they're absolute arseholes as well. You know, that have been handed everything on the plate. Got nine kids. She's got nine kids by six different blokes. Um, and she's an awful human being as well. But you do get that in life, don't you? There's a lot of awful people out there. So back to this. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. I'm, I'm loving the citrusy elements to it. A little bit of sweetness in there. It's actually, you know, you, you're drinking it and you're forgetting there's actually alcohol free which is absolutely the way it should be. You should be drinking this and not thinking, oh, I'm getting no alcohol out of this. You should be drinking and enjoying what you're drinking and going off on tangents and, uh, you know, instead of just sitting there drinking and mm. saying, oh God, it tastes like tea. And I've had some, right, you know, even some well-known brands that taste like tea. And uh, it does put you off um, when they're like that. So 
So the beer ball is going to get another abundance of beers this week. Uh, I've got one order of 65 quid. My poor bank balance. Um, 65 quid's worth coming and four of them are going to be draft beers. And them little buggers have cost me a bit but, you know, sometimes I want to be able to do that, to buy draft beer. And this is something that I'd like breweries up and down the country to put it into one litre bottles, put a, a label on, so you know what it is obviously, um, and do one litre. And there's so much that companies can do to change. Companies are changing. You know, little companies are faster to adapt. They look at the situation, they're reading um, what will work. I mean, if at the start of this pandemic you thought, I don't know, stuff what we're doing, let's let's start making face masks. If you're a, you know in, in a business like that, let's start making face masks, let's start making face shields. Fucking hell, the money you'd be making now, safeguarding jobs, making a lot of money, because it's going to be around for a long time, we know that. We know it's not going away for the next year. In fact, on the news today, um, the most infections in a day uh, was yesterday. And a frightening amount, and it's going to clear a lot of people out in the world. Surprisingly, very surprisingly, the African population has not been it off at all. Whether that's remoteness, whether that's heat, does heat play a factor? Well, they've killed people in Spain, so maybe not. But then again, that was early March in Spain. This time of the year in Spain, it's a different thing. Although Catalonia, Catalonia, where we're going on bloody holiday, is in a lockdown. So you think to yourself, ah, oh, Spain's coming out of it. Good on you, Spain. And then they've gone in lockdown. I can see the holiday being cancelled till next year. But I suppose it's, it's just one of those things, isn't it? You know, whatever happens, happens. Okay, so I so ah. Oh. What happens with people in lockdown who think I can still go to a theme park and if they get caught out... If the police pull them over and say, oh, you're from that part of Leicester. You're at a theme park. Yes, but you're in lockdown. I wonder if they get done for it. It does make you wonder. I know businesses aren't opening, but if someone lives in Leicester but works elsewhere, out of Leicester, in a pub or something, can they still go to work? It's an interesting uh, thought process. So... That was gorgeous throughout. Um, nice citrusy nose. And it's a lager as well. More of a craft lager than a... It don't taste like any lager that I've had. It tastes more like a beer to me. Um, but the aroma, the citrusy aroma, and the, the pine. Um, all in all, a quality lager. That's more like a beer to me, but... Ah, five, again, outstanding. You know, it, it hit the spot on all levels and there's no alcohol. Wow. For me, 4.6 out of five. Classing it against other alcohol-free lagers. Must remember that on reviews. It's not going up against um, King Goblin. There would be a little bit of a, you know, a slaughtering. But, um... Nonetheless, still very decent. And that's it for this beer review. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening uh, and subscribing. And uh, see you soon. Stay safe. Cheers.